City, and welcome to the Nashville Daily Podcast. I am your co-host, Stuart Deming, and today's episode is brought to you by ExploreTours.com. If you want to learn about the city of Nashville and its incredibly deep history from the Civil War to the Civil Rights to today, you need to come take a walking tour with us. That's Explore Tours. Head over to the Nashville History Walking Tour and use the code ND10 to take 10% off of your order today. And I will be leading those tours. Also, we are hiring a new tour guide, so he's also going to be leading those tours. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Head over to Explore Tours to book your ticket today. We have an update uh, about Bucky's. Uh, We're going to talk about that here in a second. We're also going to be talking about an electric car uh, showroom that's coming into downtown Nashville. Uh, We're talking about Saul, the car. Did it look look bad? 20 minutes before you told me that they had a showroom opening downtown to, to Nashville. Yeah, it was. It, it looked really good. And uh, I think it's I think it's a company that you and I had actually looked up. So they a long time ago, like a year and a half. Yes. ago. So they're the ones who uh, manufacture the Amazon trucks, the electric Amazon. Ah, trucks. OK, uh, so we're also talking about the Tennessee State Fair. We're talking about how uh, live on the green is no more for this year. And we're going to talk about some Nashville food. <laughs> there goes that tease. There goes that tease. <laughs> but let's get to Bucky's first. Uh, you can actually show my computer, Aaron, if you want. This is a press release from Bucky's. Uh, they are opening their Sevierville one on June 26th. And do you expect us to be there? Yes, you should. <laughs> we are absolutely going to be driving out to Sevierville for the grand opening of a Bucky's. It's just, it's a cultural phenomenon. Yeah. I mean, it, it, Bucky's is just. I mean, it's it's fun. It's absolutely incredible. So th- this their store, brisket tacos, oh, fantastic. I, so I would drive out to Sevierville for their brisket tacos. Sevierville is quite far for the brisket tacos. <laughs> Crossville, I would. Crossville, I would for, for the grand opening. For the grand opening, yes, to Sevierville. Yeah. So yeah, this absolutely. is this is going to be the store's largest in the world, seventy four thousand square feet, until the one opens in Texas. That's seventy five thousand square feet. The one in Crossville, just that, just that little, just a bit little of bit. Extra Te- square Texas footage. always has to be bigger, uh, but the one in Crossville, I believe, is fifty-six thousand square feet. Somebody correct me in the comments. All right, so let's talk about. We're, we're going to go more in depth here in uh, in the next few weeks, but the tickets for the uh, Tennessee State Fair slash Wilson County Fair, those two combined entities, a few years ago, are uh, they are on sale. Um, as of yesterday, according to Fox 17, so they're pre-selling state fire fair tickets They're Well, no, they're not pre-selling. They they're selling the tickets. Uh, so the tickets are available. The fair is August 17th. Um, and the fair's opening parade will follow at 7 PM on that day. Typically you'll see about 10 days max of fair festivities through there. Um, so definitely it's, you don't have to get tickets in advance unless it's cheaper. You can walk up and get all the tickets you want. Yeah. Uh, they may have some deals online. We're going to go through all of the but deals and availability for what's going to be happening at the fair. I, I do want to talk about this, some new competitions because this is, <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> okay. So you have the state honey show competition. Okay. So this is going to be all the honey makers. Nice. The grain art competition, the corn eating competition. I could throw down some sweet corn Get it all in my beard. It will look funny. Uh, corn Everything Digital Photo Contest. Scarecrow Goddess Competition. Yeah, more interesting. This is, the, this is the most interesting. Husband Calling and Mom Calling Competition. What in the world is that? That is interesting. Husband Calling. Uh, we'll have to, maybe we'll dive into YouTube on that one. Well, I know there's, <laughs> there's some terminology with that with like calling cows. I don't know if that's called husband calling, though. No, that's not. But they probably made a new one for husbands. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Is it cat it's, call? I don't know. It's the equivalent of cow calling, but for a husband. It's going to be interesting. <laughs> it may go viral. <laughs> and that's probably what they want. Okay. Yep. We'll be covering uh, we'll be covering the fair and everything here. Probably closer to July, mid-July. But now we need to talk about this. This article is, uh, it's relatively short. It's from News Channel 5. I think we just go ahead and show it. Uh, So Live on the Green was this historic concert uh, that's happened, I believe, the last 10 years in downtown Nashville. But it was a free concert uh, that happened near the city hall and courthouse. And this is how short the article is. 
three paragraphs. That's it. That's it. So the, this beloved free concert series will not be returning to downtown Nashville this year. According to the Nashville Convention and Visitor Corps, Live on the Green will not return in 2023. The announcement was made on their website. When you go to click on their website, it talks about what Live on the Green is. It, I do not see the cancellation. News Channel 5 has reached out for a comment on reasoning why the event will not take place. According to some other sources that I've been reading, uh, they just can't afford all of that talent uh, yeah, so this year. In a statement from Lester Turner, he's the president of Lightning 100 and the executive producer in Live on the Green. They cited cost as the reason for the cancellation. Uh, in a quote, he says to our Lightning 100 Live on the Green family and friends, putting on a festival of this size with this caliber of talent and keeping it free and open to the public each and every year since 2009. So for almost 14 years has been a labor of love and one of our greatest joys is Nashville's independent radio station. Unfortunately, this year, the costs and demands of that challenge are too great for us to deliver the same quality experience that uh, supporters of our festival have come to enjoy throughout the years. Uh, last year was the first event that it's happened since 2019. So probably actually a total of 10 years yeah. during that like 14 year duration. Uh, okay, so here this is interesting. Turner said he plans to bring the event back in 2024 even stronger. So it, it almost seems like they're, they're saving up some funds. They're saving up some funds to do it next year, and it sounds like their goal is to keep it free mm -hmm. um, because they could have just said, okay, a $5 ticket charge. Which isn't bad. Which is incredible for yeah. the amount of talent that they are bringing in, um, and people probably would have been fine with it, but mm -hmm. they're probably, you know, they're going to put their... Uh, their foot down and say it's we're going to keep it free and it's, and so that way you know we're building it back up uh next year i don't know if i personally would have i, I would have loved to keep the momentum going if i were them um and maybe charge for it and that that just be the thing because people look forward to that every year people probably come to nashville every year for that um well, it's, and it, it's it, it like highlights a, the great rock scene here yeah that and it's a big event for the college students of yeah. nashville yeah um, I've actually have never, I've only, uh, I've only dropped off people at live on the green. Cause yeah. I don't enjoy being around large <laughs> crowds of people like that. Uh, so I've never been, but I've, I've, I've heard great things. Um, but I also don't want to sit in 90 degree weather surrounded by a bunch of people. Outside. Oh no, you're standing. Oh yeah. I don't want to do that either. <laughs> so, um, but talking about a lot of people. There's a lot of people that attend this next event that we're about to talk about. Well, and so uh, even before or, Oh, no, you're, you're talking about exactly what I was going to talk about. I couldn't remember if we had it in the lineup or not. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I was yeah, like, we wait, do. wait, we need to talk about this thing because it's related to live on the green and concerts, and it's right here in our lineup. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I think we're talking about the same <laughs> we thing. We are, we are. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so the we talked about this about two weeks ago. There was a possibility that the New Year's Eve Nashville Big Bash was going to potentially move over to Centennial Park. But News Channel 5 has confirmed they are returning back to Bicentennial Capital Mall State Park, and that they're going to be having the celebration there. And this is an event that typically has about 200,000 people that attend it. So I wonder what the negotiations was from the state and with Butch. Butch, so in Butch's quote, he said, both sides have worked to reach a win-win solution to continue to hold the New Year's Eve event at Bicentennial Capital Mall State Park. Come on, Butch. Uh, Capital Mall State Park. We, my, my we're, we're, they're the only ones like that don't get corrected. Yeah, oh, we yeah. get corrected every time we go to Bicentennial Capital Mall State Park. Yeah, but I I guarantee you they. Uh, it, it sounds like the uh, visitors uh, convention and uh, or national convention and visitors corporation. They went on the offensive essentially, putting out a press release like, "Hey, this is gonna have to change. This is the the cost went up dramatically." And then the state tends to be like, oh, "This is our only really big event every year." Or they just didn't like the bad press, yeah, from it. That could be true. Um, so I think the visitors corporation did did uh, did the right thing on their behalf to try and get the good negotiation, and uh, and and say, hey, we're gonna make you look good. We're gonna come in. We're gonna do it again. Um, and don't charge four hundred thousand dollars for us to use it uh, after a one hundred thousand dollar use for the past few years. So my my guess is they probably met somewhere in the middle, and yeah. uh, it's gonna be a good event. All right. 
And that's an event I won't be going to as well. So <laughs> uh, today's episode is brought to you by Caffeine. We'll talk about food here in a second. Uh, but today's episode is brought to you by Caffeine. You can use the code XPLR20 to take 20% off of your order at blessedaycoffee.com. We have a collaboration with Blessed Day Coffee, and this is called the Tennessee Sunrise Blonde Rose. At one of my favorite locations in Middle Tennessee, this is on the coffee bag. This is the Narrows of Harpeth. And if you go over to our Instagram account, explore.nash, we've been getting a lot of uh, hate comments because of us posting the incredible views of the Narrows of Harpeth. But this coffee is a great light roast. It is, just it is amazing. They are jealous because they're jealous <laughs> of those views and this caffeine. Uh, but it, it is so tasteful. Uh, it wakes me up every morning. The caffeine hits the right spots all the time. Use that code XPLR20 at Blessed Day Coffee. They take 20% off. And they also have free delivery in the Nashville area. Aaron, where have you eaten recently? Um, good question. I've hit some of the regular spots for for me. Um, West Coast uh, West Coast Taco Shop. So I'm, I'm doing keto. I call them usually, and I, I get no tortilla on a steak, egg, and cheese burrito. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah, every time this they little, put no, yeah. no, 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 no. They do. They do great. They uh, rarely do they ever get everything wrong. Um, but the guy on the phone, so funny because uh, most people are like, yeah, that's no problem. <laughs> he was like, you don't want the tortilla. <laughs> I was like, no, He's like, you just, you just want it in a box. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It was, it was just, a, it was such a great interaction. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it was, it was so filling. Um, but West coast taco shop, steak, egg and cheese burrito without the burrito. Where did, where have you eaten recently? I always mess up the name. Uh, it's near the Chick-fil-A in Hermitage in the Las Palmas. Um, I Las got, Palamos. I, I got the, uh, I get what I always get. They do this incredible fajita taco salad and it is what they do on the, so they have like the shell of the taco salad. Which I think their their shell is my favorite shell in town for taco salads. The taco salad um, shells are they're awesome. They're incredible. Yeah. A great invention. But what's even better with this one is what they do is they take queso and they wrap the entire shell in queso with their fajita taco salad. And then they have lettuce Ooh. and then the, the protein and then onions and peppers. And either the chicken or the, the steak, it, it's fantastic every time. And where, where is this specific one? Uh, they have like seven locations throughout Middle yeah. Tennessee, but the one I usually go to is to buy the Chick-fil-A in Hermitage. Ah, okay. Yeah. 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 Right next to yeah. that, uh, yep. That technology yep. store. Um, <laughs> it's like a little off brand Best Buy place. Yeah. I can't yeah. remember the name of it. Yeah. 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 Um, that's how good it is. <laughs> um, okay. So speaking of good food, there's always good food at assembly food hall inside of fifth and Broadway. And sir, this is what you were telling me yesterday that there is inside of fifth and broad. They have a lot of shopping on the first floor. Um, well, something unexpected is, uh, popping into one of those, uh, little shopping stores. And maybe this is not so little anymore. Uh, one of these stores, there is going to be an automotive showroom inside of Fifth and Broad in one of the shopping areas. Um, well, this is this is absolutely incredible. It, it is from uh, electric vehicle maker Rivian Automotive Incorporated. They are, according to the Business Journal, eyeing a showroom in uh, the fifth and broad retail space. Well, so I, I went to Google maps and I'm like, Oh, I think Greg would have done a walk through through fifth and broad so we can see yeah, what you, shop this right? is going yeah, through. You would think. So if you pull it up, this is the only image. It's just oh. from 2021 of fifth and broad. And Interesting. so uh, it's going to be one of these shops. I think it's actually one of the shops on the other side. I, I think you're right. I think it is going to be one of the shops on the other side. So let's, let's go ahead and throw up their website real quick just to see what we're looking at and what's going to be and, in this showroom. Yeah. And that's the the funny thing is you told me when I got back to the studio yesterday, you told me, Hey, this automotive place is coming into fifth and broad. And I just said, I literally just saw their truck on the interstate and we had seen, um, they've been working on these vehicles for a while years yeah. and we followed their journey online. 
Uh, so this is actually really cool. Okay, you've got their website pulled up. So this is the uh, that is R one T. That is the truck that I saw yesterday. Um, Different license plate, but the truck. So the cool thing about this is, I, I really they had this image. Where was it? The lights look cool. Um, yep. Where is it? Okay, here we are. That's cool. Oh. So this is how much storage is in that <laughs> truck. That's great. Uh, good on them. That is a fantastic that's, that, little that, that, stop motion. That's cool. Okay, and right then there. this is their SUV that's coming out, the R, uh, R1S. R That thing that looks is really nice. Modeled after the G-Wagon almost mm -hmm. a little that, bit, it but looks it, looks, exactly it looks fantastic. Like uh, so this is still on reserve, so you can reserve this for $1,000 right now. Uh, but Whoa. they had, I think they had the same stop motion thing too. Hold on. They did. So just it, just some pictures. Yeah. It's 300 <laughs> cubic square feet inside of that thing. Yeah. If that means anything to you, because it doesn't to me, <laughs> it just um, means I could ship a lot of gear. They're they're gonna take over the clothing store uh, retail space, former to Travis Austin. It's on the first floor. Uh, that's according to a newly filed permit. So uh, Rivian is founded in. They're on the NASDAQ. 2009. Um, they founded in 2009. Uh, the company had more than $1.6 billion in revenue last year. So this is That's interesting. Wild. Uh, in March, another electric vehicle company, Polestar, which I've never heard of them, filed a permit for a retail space in the Gulch at 1222 Demumbrian Street. Interesting. Let's look up what they have. Are they doing? I wonder if they are doing a showroom as well. Um, the arrival of showrooms is another. This is just a business journal. Talking about the EV industry here um, in Nashville, um, and we'll we'll talk about another EV story here in just a second after you look up Polestar. I thought they were a polling company. Yeah, so here <laughs> here we are. So this is Polestar. It kind of looks kind of like a Tesla. Tesla and a Chevy mixed together. Yeah, um, it looks nice. I wonder if they have SUVs. No, it just looks like cars. This is exactly like an Apple website. I wonder why. Okay. Um, so we did have uh, another EV experience. We had the opportunity to go to Nissan Stadium the other day and meet this uh, couple named Julie and Chris. And they have, they're doing something really cool. They're traveling all through the Arctic and then down to Antarctica in an EV Nissan vehicle. Yeah. So their journey is pole to pole. Yeah, let me, uh, let me we'll, throw up their Instagram. Yeah, their we'll, we'll put this in our show notes as well if you want to follow their journey. They're here in Nashville. Pr they, they're leave, they're, they're, they're leaving, last yeah, they're they're in leaving this morning. Um, but they, they started at Magnetic Pole North, and they're driving with this uh, Nissan um, model. We'll, we'll pull up the model as well and show it for you. Uh, and it's mostly stock. The only thing they changed was the tires. Yeah, which is bizarre. The suspension is the same. Everything else mm -hmm. is the same. Um, and they're taking it from magnetic pole north to magnetic pole south, uh, which is just absolutely wild. So, okay, so Stuart, you have their website pulled up. Yeah, so you can just go visit pole to pole. I think it's just pole to pole EV, uh, dot com. Uh, but this is the Nissan, is it the Ariat? Area. Area, okay. Yep. Um, so the only changes they've made is they, they have these they put tire bigger, bases. Bigger tires on, but they didn't have to like race the car or anything no, to no. put those big tires Which on. Which is great. And so yeah. these are 39 inch tires. And then when they're going over like the terrain in the Arctic, they lower the tire pressure down to eight or nine PSI. I don't so think they had to absorb. do that on their own. <laughs> I think no, no, the no, cold they probably did that yeah, all on the their cold own. Probably, yeah, the cold probably did. So th th that was just a fun journey. Um, we'll probably have some Instagram stories on our brand, explore.nash, to yeah. show off. Yeah, so that was that was fun. We got to to meet them, hang out with them for a little bit. The, the, some of the guys at Nissan were there. So uh, it, was just a, it was just a fun time. Um, definitely check out their journey. Um, on pull to pull again, we'll put that. I do since, on our we're, since, since we're shouting out people. Um, I want to shout out Phil. Uh, we yeah, met yeah. At, we met him at Cletus the other day, and uh, he is from England, uh, Manchester. He's from Manchester, yeah. And uh, so we were we were at Cletus, and we just walked in. We we're about to order, and he turned around. And he's like Aaron and Stewart, uh -huh. and we're like, hey. And uh, so we ended up having lunch with Phil. So Phil, if you're listening to this, uh, I hope that your trip has gone well, and I hope Phil you've learned is, a lot about Nashville. Uh, uh, his 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 mate that he brought. Yep. Uh, it was his birthday. Yeah. So they they had a lot planned. Yeah. So some of the things they had planned was going to some Nashville restaurants. And we're about to talk about some things that are coming to Nashville. 
Uh, so Butcher and B, one of my personal favorite restaurants here in Nashville, is opening a private event space in East Nashville. Uh, this is going to be, be well, holding. So, so the interesting thing is they, I think they did this on purpose. They didn't, they, it's called a private dining venue and lounge is the title, mm-hmm. but then they call it a private event venue, the Rose Room. Um, so I think we're, we're starting to see because when you think event space, you think blank room that can get some round tables and chairs in with a presentation and maybe some catering. Um, depending on, uh, especially with the, all the hotel meeting rooms mm-hmm. and event rooms in there. But this is so specific mm-hmm. to the dining scene. I think this is, th- this is going to be, this is, there's, I think there's going to be huge private dining scene that's moving into Nashville. Yep. This is a good indication of that. And Butcher, Butcher and the Bee, and they have been at the forefront of all of this, especially in, in the restaurant world. And they're known, really heavily known in Charleston. It's one of my personal favorite places. Yeah. Their whipped feta is out of this world good. Let's show this photo so you can see the aesthetic of this like new this place. Is, this is not a restaurant. This is a private dining room. Yes, and it's called The Rose, correct? The Rose Room. Rose room. It is right across from the Butcher and Bee in East Nashville. So, yeah, it said the address on the Nashville Business Journal says 902. And when you look that up in Google, it brings you to Butcher and B. <laughs> so that's funny. Yeah. So this, this is awesome. Uh, I'm excited because does it say they're going to have like their own uh, like chef driven dinners and stuff in there? So it, for the menu, it says it has a customizable menu and okay. a beverage. It has beverage lists. It is a private bar and a private entrance. So. Uh, you know, not too much detail. So I mean, you got to call and find out. You got to be real interested, and it's going to cost a lot of money. So there is a hot chicken festival that happens every Fourth of July that is returning to the um, Wood- Woodland Street Park. Is that what it's called right there? That- uh, yeah, uh, it's yes, but it's benefiting East Park. East Park. Okay, that's East Park, That's called. right. But it's benefiting friends of Shelby Park. Uh, and bottoms. Uh, so this is happening to 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. on 4th of July. We will be covering uh, the best firework locations very soon on yeah. explore.nash and on this podcast. And we have some other news. This one's interesting. There's a new coffee shop coming to the Gulch. Who would have thought? The Gulch, I think, per capita. I don't know where they... The, uh, well, I, I I always say where where is their room? They're not they're not building in a new building, no. so there's there really isn't any room. Uh, well, this is a new tower, so the 122. It is a new one. tower, but they don't they don't have to buy new land and all that yeah. just for the coffee shop. So, uh, so they let, let's let me show this real quick on Google Map. Let's get Greg. Let's get him to some work. Greg, we haven't seen, we haven't seen old Greg. No, in a we, while. we haven't. We haven't. We're gonna work him. All right. So um, this is this is a relatively new skyscraper in downtown, and all right, take me to the right place, Greg. There we are. Okay, so this is the 122 one. They're probably going to be going into that little area. That makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. So if you could have um, a a model where I'll show you where this coffee shop is located in Hawaii because I've been there. Uh, if you could have a model kind of similar to that, um, this it would be very interesting due to Nashville's weather. Mm-hmm. It may not be possible, um, but... Yeah, I, I think right there would be really, really good for it. Because I, I think just around this corner it would be difficult unless unless there's retail space over here. There could I be. think they would rather be off of Broadway because of the foot traffic. Yeah. Because how much foot traffic is coming down 13th Avenue? Right Not now? a whole lot. Not so a whole lot. The entrance on Broadway probably would make more sense. Uh, this area is going to be really interesting because that bridge is about to close down for eight weeks. Yeah. Uh, here in about three weeks. No, four weeks. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's that's going to be interesting. But what this this place is called Badass Coffee. It's out of Hawaii, um, and then so I was I was curious to see if I had been, um, and I have. I've bought their beans. I've been to the original store in Hawaii. Um, we're sending Greg in a a teleport. Yeah, and we're gonna send him to Hawaii right now to show where that location is. He's saying aloha. <laughs> He's saying, he is saying aloha. All right. So uh, Greg, our magic man, is over in 671 uh, Front this Street. Is in, this is in Maui. Um, and so this is this is an interesting location because this is not a coffee shop. You, you can't just go in and order 
a, uh, a cup of coffee and have like a ton of different espresso options. Uh, I'm sure you could probably get a cup if you really wanted to, cause they roast there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this is where it's just walls of bags. That's cool. Uh, of, of their coffee. Is um, this a very tourist centric area? Um, it's a mix. Okay. Um, it is a kind of small town area, mm-hmm. uh, with a bunch of, uh, some tourist shops on both sides of the street. Uh, a lot of good places to eat, but also a good local scene because the beach is right there. It's like a beach. Yeah. Town it's like and, behind. Yeah. yeah. So, so I'll show you where we are. So if you let's go forward, just a step, a small step. Yep, that, oh, was a oh, that was a large leap. That was a large leap for <laughs> Greg and look to her left and zoom in right in that area. Um, and you'll see coffee is on the left a little bit right there. That's where that coffee is. That little store right there to the right. Okay. Uh, that's, that's where the coffee is located inside of there. Uh, so very, very small. Um, uh, but it's you a know, nice you, little town. You, oh, this is great. So keep going straight, uh, to the left and straight. This is w- a lot of why people travel to this town. Stuart, you've seen stuff like this. Go to your right. Go to my right. Okay. And you'll see this big, oh, this is big one of those trees. This is one of yeah, those yeah, big yeah, trees yeah. that has, you know, extended roots for, mm-hmm. Uh, like that uh, one in Charleston, 30, 40, 30 yards. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Like the one in Charleston, but the view man behind the, the here, view, that view is better that, than that. That tree. view is great. All the mountains are back there. And then the ocean is just right to the right. So let's go back to, you can go to the right at some point and keep going and you'll see the ocean all right, and all Greg. the other islands. And there's some boats, Greg, there's some boats Greg's and, about to be on a boat. Yeah. So it's a great area. Um, yeah, this is cool. Yeah. The, the is coffee that the, shop, is that the big volcano. Uh, no. Okay. This is, this is Maui. So all the big, uh, the big volcanoes are on the big Island, mm-hmm. uh, which is actually on Hawaii where, yep. Yeah, where they get most of their coffee from that Island mm-hmm. as, uh, and, and then they bring it over to, uh, the Maui side. Probably because of the, the, the beans over there with the volcanic like dust and all that stuff is probably incredible. It, it is. Yeah. So well, I'm excited uh, about badass coffee. Yeah. It, it's going to be awesome. Uh, I bought a bag while I was there. Mm -hmm. So it's in Hawaii. They didn't even have to import it into the U S and it was still really expensive. Oh yeah. yeah. So this is their, their beans. They're not going to be cheap. They're not going to be cheap because they're importing it. Yep. From Hawaii to here. Okay. So uh, we hope that you guys have a great weekend. We, we appreciate you guys listening to the Nashville daily podcast. We have a lot of fun content coming next week. Also follow us on Instagram at explore.nash. That's X P L R dot Nash. You can also follow the podcast uh, website at Nashville daily podcast.com and come take a tour with us. I want to show you Nashville at explore tours.com. You can book your ticket for the Nashville history walking tour. Use code ND 10 to take 10% off. We'll see you guys on Monday. Thank you for listening to the Nashville Daily Podcast. If you want to learn more, head to NashvilleDailyPodcast.com. You can also follow us on social media at Explore.Nash on Instagram, Nashville Daily Podcast on YouTube, and Explore.Nash on YouTube as well. The Nashville Daily Podcast is an Explore LLC production, copyright 2023.